everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. As always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. This week, we won't have any further information on Enchanters or Hell the Last Saga, but let's get to everything else. For Joan of Arc today, your support for providing feedback on the Teutonic Knight scenario books was overwhelming. Over 700 comments were gathered and now Erwin, our lead developer, is evaluating everything and making sure he implements all of the feedback that's relevant. Once again, we'd like to thank you for your support. As you know, the pledge manager is now closed, and we're sorry to have had to close it prematurely. An unexpected issue arose from the litigation, and we were forced to close the pledge manager more hastily than we planned. If you were unable to finish closing your pledge manager, please contact support at mythicgames.net and our customer support team can assist you in finalizing your pledge manually. We are now working to close all the files and send them to the factory on Friday, February 26th. We've also seen some questions regarding the stretch goal miniatures mentioning that some of them are not used in the scenarios. That is correct, and this is how it was meant to be. Around three to four miniatures from the stretch goals were planned only to be used in the battle mode. Now, rest assured, you will have full use of all the miniatures in different modes of the game. Another issue that is, quite frankly, time we discussed is the deluxe storage box. It's been some time that we've been in discussions with Game Trace for a storage solution, and now we finally received the first renders from them. Here's what we have. These are the mock-ups of the resource trays. There will be two in each storage solution so that you can have all your resources allocated there. As usual with game trays, they will stack. In total, you'll have four trays in the box. This is what a preliminary stack looks like. The card deck boxes will be separate to the cardboard and wood trays. Each of the four trays on top will use the same lid and be stackable and, of course, have an F in the of <laughs> and will have more detailed engravings. The middle tray will hold the hexes in below and hold the other large cardboard hexes. Maybe some other items also, if it makes sense to you. With that being said, please note that these are mock-ups and we are still in discussion with game trays to optimize what is needed. The base tray is a unique female mold. This will maximize the available space to hold the hexes. Additionally, there is a deck separator tile that is used to split up expansion tiles and make it easy to find and pull out the tiles you need to play in the current game. Here's also a close-up of the terrain tray, which still has room for other items. Again, whatever makes sense to you. For Solomon Kane today, first off, we just wanted to share that so far, three content creators have been able to share their thoughts on the game with us and some others. King of Average, Jeremy Howard from Man vs. Meeple, and Adam Smith of Rolling Solo have all reported loving the game. King of Average stated, This game got me playing solo and enjoying it a lot. The mechanisms are really good and are integrated into the story. Jeremy said, This game is off the freaking charts. Next level thematic gameplay. While Adam reports, I think this is a home run based on what I've played so far. I haven't had a driving urge to want to play an entire game front to back this much in a long time. So with that being said, great news for Wave 1 delivery. The first containers have been received and are getting processed into each of their respective hubs warehouses. Quartermaster Logistics just received its first shipment and will begin shipping very soon. Meeple Logistics is sending out address verifications and if you're in Europe, you might have already received one of those. First games will come in uh, to Meeple Logistics on February 24th or 25th, and they will begin shipping the first week of March. Spiral Galaxy should have received their games yesterday, and we're just waiting on confirmation from them on that. There will, they will be sending address verifications out on February 26th, and will start shipping March 1st. 
VR Distribution's product will be there on February 24th with shipping to begin shortly after it arrives. And lastly, VFI Asia already has the product and is sorting them out so that shipping should also begin shortly. In other news, we've also received the white samples for Wave 2 from the factory. And we've reviewed those and sent feedback to the factory. Now, this is just a layout of how the games will look, only these are not printed components. Wave 2 is in external playtesting right now to make sure that everything plays flawlessly, while translation and proofreading is also happening at the same time. But as we move on, we will keep you posted with more news as it comes available. For Ride Busters today, the upgrade pack is on the way. We'd like to take this opportunity to explain a bit more about the errata pack. Initially, this started to be as an errata pack, so we found the errors and we corrected them. We also had previously shared a link for this. All the errors in cards and scenario books were summarized in one and a half pages of notes. So we want to stress that these are the only mistakes in Reichbusters, a total of one and a half pages. Specifically, those corrections included five points in the rulebook, five points in the core mission book, 14 corrected cards, one token correction, and corrected inventory lists for the core, as well as the Not of This Earth and Project X expansions. So based on the above, we thought it was kind of unfair to say that it, you're going to receive an errata pack. It's mostly an upgrade pack. Since we were correcting the above few issues, we decided to take the time and redo some things so that they were more aesthetically appealing too. This is why you get scenario books and rule books from scratch, the same with several cards and even newly designed hero cards. So please don't be intimidated when you see the number of things in the pack. These are not all mistakes. This is simply us taking it a step further and offering something that is more pleasant to the eye as well as more user friendly. On to delivery news now. The upgrade pack has an estimated time of departure for Meeple Logistics of March 3rd, with an estimated time of arrival of March 28th. The estimated time of departure for QML is March 5th, with an estimated time of arrival of April 6th. And of course, we will pass on the ship information uh, once they are loaded. Lastly, on the Reichbuster sleeves in Canada specifically, their delivery has been delayed as Game on Tabletop, the pledge manager that we used at the time, did not require states for Canada. And QML won't ship them out without this information. So right now we are internally going line by line, finding addresses and their locations. The process from our side should be done by the end of this week. So we, of course, thank you for your patience on this issue, and we will keep you updated as information flows. So for Super Fantasy Brawl today, in case you don't know by now, Super Fantasy Brawl is coming back to Kickstarter with nine new champions. This is still season one, so it's a continuation from the previous Kickstarter campaign. When is this coming to Kickstarter, you might say? Well, the Kickstarter will launch on March 9th, 2021, and this will be a 10-day campaign. Some things that we can tell you are, first of all, the Kickstarter box from the first campaign will not be provided again. Uh, we are planning on offering the product in the packaging that will be available in retail. You will be able to find everything that you did in the first Kickstarter campaign, apart from the Kickstarter big box with the game trays. Now, with regards to the force of nature and French copies of the game in our website, the estimated time of departure for Meatball Logistics is March 3rd, with an estimated time of arrival of March 28th. The estimated time for departure for a Quartermaster Logistics is March 5th, with an estimated time of arrival of April 6th. 
and we'll have shipping information on those once they're loaded onto their boats. Well, hello watchers. A few weeks ago, we received a white box sample of Steam Watchers and its expansions. So here are a few of the technical photos that we took, but please realize that these are not final components or colors. First, we have the game board and clan boards on top of the boxes containing the other components. Then underneath that, a clan tray with space for the combat wheel, order tokens, and a couple of other trays that have some clan independent components like farms, steam columns, and archon cards. And if all that didn't sway you, how about some miniatures? Now, we've touched up a few things with the factory, but nothing major. A size adjustment here, a mini hue adjustment there, and we haven't been in touch with the factory recently since it's Chinese New Year. But we do expect great news in the very near future, so stay tuned. Well, hello, Torch Bearers. As you know, we are currently working on the bosses, something that will be a huge part of the Darkest Dungeon experience. But that doesn't mean that we're not working on and constantly improving the other parts of the game as well. So today we want to talk about some of those other things that we've been working on. First, we've made a small addition that has a big impact to the light tracker. Light is a very important part of the game and something that you basically have to manage as a team. The torch light can go from 0 to 5, with 5 being fully bright and 0 being complete darkness. As the light fades, things, become, things begin to become deadlier and harder for the heroes. Initially, when the light was at 5, it had no special effects, so nothing bad was happening for the heroes. And that was kind of following the general logic of the game. Nothing happens is the best thing that can happen. But during our playtests, we noticed that there were no real incentives for the group to try and keep the light at 5. So we decided to give it a little something. Believe it or not, we came up with the idea to give it something positive. A plus one dodge boost for the heroes. Now this small change now gives the players an incentive to try and keep the torch light at 5 and also works really well in conjunction with the effect when the light drops to 3 to 4 that both heroes and monsters get a plus 1 critical chance. So things get deadlier indeed. Other small changes have also been made, mainly on some of the conditions by streamlining things a bit. Protection is something that some monsters have by default, but also, heroes and other monsters can get it for a limited time as a condition. When a character has protection, when it receives any amount of damage, it suffers only half of it. Initially, there were two types of protection. Protection up suffer half damage rounded up, and protection down suffer half damage rounded down. Then we've removed the second one, so now every time you have protection, you always suffer half the damage rounded up. We've also made that gen a general rule, so every time you need to calculate something by half, it's always rounded up. So that also streamlined another condition in the same way. When a character with repost suffers any amount of damage, it deals back half of that damage rounded up. Lastly, another condition that we streamlined is guard. Initially, when a character was using a skill with guard, it was targeting one of its allies, and one of them was getting the guarded condition, and the other one was getting the guard, depending on the skill. That's changed to something much simpler. Now, there is only guard, no guarded, and when a character chooses an enemy target, it can only do so between characters with guard, if any. Of course, you can imagine those changes trigger a chain reaction that we needed to revisit a lot of things and make the necessary adjustments, something that, of course, we're more than happy to do in order to deliver the best possible product to all of you uh, that supported it. So until next time, try to keep your stress low and your spirits high. Hey everyone, I'm back. Thank you so much for keeping this on the down low so that we can continue doing this. I really enjoy talking about uh, games when Mr. Stuffy Head isn't around. So uh, I appreciate you uh, keeping this all on the down low, not saying anything in the comments. I appreciate it. 
very cool. So anyway, wanted to come back and uh, report to you just about one game today, and that is this one right here, Cheese Thief. Now this is put out by Jolly Thinkers. This is the same group that brought us uh, Deception Murder in Hong Kong. Uh, so that's one of my favorite games of all time. It's a great social deduction game. Uh, it's kind of bigger than this one as well, but this is also a social deduction game, but it's a lot more simple. So basically with this one, everybody is a mouse and you're going to be taking, a, a, you're, you're sleeping, you're going to sleep at night and uh, you're going to be rolling a die and you have these really cool little uh, tree stump cups. So anyway, you're going to be taking those, those cups and you're going to be rolling a die and placing it face down. It's a six sided die. The number on it uh, corresponds to the hour in the middle of the night that you're going to wake up and check because you guys have this block of succulent cheese that you're going to try to keep and share in the morning. But one of you is a cheese thief and you are going, if you're the cheese thief, you're going to want to steal that piece of cheese during the night and hide it or eat it, whatever you want to do. Um, but everybody else is just kind of waking up and making sure that that cheese is still there. And then after all six hours have passed, you're all going to uh, kind of uh, wake up and talk about when they think that cheese might have been stolen. And so you're you're trying to figure out who the cheese thief is is if you're one of the sleepyhead mouse mice. Yeah, mice. But if you're the cheese thief, you're trying to kind of make other people seem a little bit more shady than they actually are. So there's that discussion time that happens after that's, uh, after the six hours takes place. Before that discussion time, however, the cheese thief can choose one person to be his accomplice, so to speak, or a follower. Um, so, you know, the reason you would want to do that is because if you wake up at the same time as somebody else, uh, and they see you steal the cheese, you can choose them during that, uh, follower phase. So it's like they're on your side now. So after the discussion happens, then you have a vote and whoever has the most votes has to reveal their card. And if they're the cheese thief, then the uh, sleepyheads have won. If they're a sleepyhead, then the cheese thief has won and gotten away with his cheese, and uh, he'll come back and strike another day. If there's a tie where both, where two people uh, have the same number of votes, they all have to sh uh, reveal their cards. So uh, that's another way that the cheese thief can be caught. So it's a really neat, uh, quick game. It only takes about 10 minutes to play a game of it. So uh, when we played this the other night, I think we played around six different goes of it. And it took us about an hour and a half all together because, you know, the, the discussion time can kind of go pretty quick or sometimes it can take a little bit longer. But this is a really cool, light uh, social deduction game that has some pretty neat components in it as well. Those little uh, cups are pretty nice and then the dice are all wooden and they have well-rounded corners. The cheese was a bit strange. It was just a... A sponge. It looks like cheese, but it's just a sponge. But anyway, that's the one that I really enjoyed. So go ahead and check it out if you can. I think it is on the market. If not, I apologize. You have to wait, but it's cool. So check it out when you can. Let's get out of here before he notices. Bye. Now remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or just to see what he might spoil. But that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, play some games while you're at it, and we'll see you on the flip side. Take care.